This video is powered by Man in the Dream. Hello fellow chemical engineers. For today's lesson we'll be discussing how to apply Legendre transforms to thermodynamics. Note this is not a comprehensive guide to Legendre transforms, but rather a tutorial on how to reconstruct the fundamental equation to obtain the other potential functions, for instance, Helmholtz free energy, Gibbs free energy, and enthalpy. For a more extensive guide on Legendre transforms, I recommend the book Thermodynamics and its Applications, the third edition by Tesser and Modell. So to begin, let's consider the following equation. So as you can see, this equation is in point slope form, which means C is the slope. And furthermore, since we're applying this, this uh, equation to um, intensive thermodynamic functions of two variables, uh, we can assume that y naught is a function of, of two independent variables. And also, we can write the C, the slope, in, in terms of two variables, C1 and C2. And also note that these are at constant x2 for C1 and constant x1 for C2. So now we're going to rearrange the general equation and this results in the first order Legendre transform for a function of two variables. Um, so for the, the first variable it's going to be x1 and c1 and for 2 it's going to be x1 and c2. Then let's go ahead and write the equation for the second order Legendre transform. And after this we're going to apply this idea to thermodynamics. So let's go ahead and apply these concepts to thermodynamics. So let's take y not to be intensive internal energy. So intensive internal energy, as we all know, is a function of entropy and volume. And also let's write the fundamental equation in differential form as well. So from the following equations for internal energy, we can see that x1 can be taken as volume and x2 can be taken as entropy. So this means that C1 would be du over dv at constant entropy, and C2 would be du over ds at constant volume. And C1 is negative pressure from the fundamental equation, and C2 is temperature from the fundamental equation. And note that these concepts of the total differential come from multivariable calculus. Let's begin by finding the first order Legendre transform with volume as an independent variable. As you can see, C1 is negative pressure, so therefore from the definition of the first order Legendre transform, the following equation is this. So therefore, this is the equation for enthalpy. And taking the differential form of both sides, you find that du plus PdV plus VdP. And then inserting the fundamental equation for internal energy, you see that the negative PdV and the PdV cancels, so you get the appropriate differential form for enthalpy. So next, let's find the other first order Legendre transform by taking the independent variable to be entropy, and therefore the slope then becomes temperature. So this is the equation for Helmholtz free energy, and taking the differential of both sides, we see that du minus CDS minus SDT, and inserting the fundamental equation for internal energy, we see that the, the TDS cancels and so we get a function of temperature and volume. So finally, to obtain the second order Legendre transform, we must combine both first order transforms in our basis function internal energy. Upon doing so, we arrive at the Gibbs free energy equation. And you can also combine the U plus PV simplify this a, a little bit and then of course taking the differential of both sides and then inserting the enthalpy equation that we derived 
you arrive at a function of temperature and pressure, which is arguably one of the most useful potential functions that we have, have derived. So the practicality of reconstructing the fundamental equation is simple. If the potential function in terms of measurable quantities is needed, i.e. the Gibbs free energy, or if you ever forget the equations for the other potential functions, it's easily derived. And I hope these concepts help your chemical engineering adventures. Please like, share, and subscribe.